artist, guys. Yeah, as you could see. Okay, good. So, classes. What are the classes? Surrender has Hunter, Paladin, Warrior, which is, well, pretty exciting that there is actually another warrior again. We didn't see who is warrior, by the way. Yeah? But it's interesting that there is another warrior again. Surrender also plays Hunter and he plays Paradin. On the other hand, we have Pavel having Priest, Mage and Warrior. I think I... Yes, okay. Okay, so yeah, Pavel with Priest Mage Warrior, also very interesting what that will be. We will see. Okay, so I just check whether I have everything. Okay, yeah, that should be right. We see Surrender with a Patron Warrior actually, probably without War Strong for obvious reasons, and on the other hand, we see Pavel also having a Patron Warrior. Hmm. So, Patron Warrior actually made some appearance, especially after seen in, well, Oscarkas in the World Champion deck. He played the Patron right, and uh, Taish also played the Patron Warrior. So, it makes some sense that you, that you see an archetype which actually has been thought being dead, that we see that being played. You don't see that on the ladder at all, by the way, though. So, um, which is actually quite interesting, right? I mean, after it uh, winning World Championships and stuff like this, you would have perhaps thought that you could have seen it more often. But yeah, didn't happen. Perhaps also because it's quite a complicated deck to be played. Not as complicated as Patreon with the Warsong has been. But it seems that people also don't believe it being probably top tier or tier one. No, I, I also don't believe it, to be honest, but yeah, both people are playing it, so we will actually see what will happen here. In comparison to the old, um, to the old state, where you actually saw war songs, um, war song killed also later, that usually won't happen that often. In this matchup nowadays, it's even more about the patron and the inner age and who goes first patrons. Yeah, I know it was already like this in the recent um, cases. So and both players are also playing incredibly quickly. Like those guys. I mean, it's so like. I mean, it's an important tournament, right? And they are just. Did we just take like two minutes for ten turns or something? But okay. So what I'm saying is, um, of course, whoever made the patrons first usually one in earlier times before the patron uh, before the war song nerf now that's different guys now well uh, different now it's even like much much more so now it's actually different because whoever goes patron first simply wins now for sure yeah so there is no comeback mechanism which actually has been beforehand with the war song possibility um, simply because like after one player produced Patrons, the other one could have either tried to go for some kind of one turn kill with Thorison after Thorison into a lot of patrons uh, with Warsaw or into double Berserk with whirlwind effects and then kill like this, or they would have had the ability to actually play Warsong into patrons themselves, trying to get rid of some patrons like that, or playing Warsong into. Uh, kind of, well, Berserk and then inner raging the Berserk or Taskmaster onto something and then inner raging the Taskmaster, stuff like that and then sending them into the patrons to get rid of some of those. But this is history. Nowadays, whoever gets patrons first wins. In this case, it's Surrender. Surrender got the patrons first. GG. Yeah. How should he do it? Mm hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Deathbite, attacking Shredder, cruel taskmaster onto one of those patrons, sending them into the guy. Yeah. 
In earlier times, something like this would have not been super easily possible because you would have always been a little bit afraid that you could die. That doesn't happen in this case because there is actually not real burst. Not real burst available for the warrior any longer. Now Surrender decides here to actually deal two more damage. Which is actually an interesting decision because if you think about it, he could have also taskmastered the 3 2 and actually retrieving a 3 3 instead. So he actually values the 5 2 and the damage over having another 3 3. And uh, that definitely makes sense because if Pavel would play something which requires more damage to be dealt, then he would simply be able to do to deal with that. Pavel could have uh, produced a lot of patrons, but he also realized that that would have not been such a good idea because Surrender could have simply cleared one with a Taskmaster and the other one with weapon, um, resulting in him losing everything. So he just tried to go for cards and... Well, actually, I don't even know what, what you want to draw. I mean, if Pavel doesn't run one Brawl in his deck, which he probably doesn't, there is simply no comeback me mechanism. You could perhaps try to set up a lot of whirlwinds. Yeah, that's... But, but also not really. I mean, he also spent one inner rage. What, no? and what I'm saying is that the plan, if there is any plan, would be to damage the patrons all to one health and then do a whirlwind. Or to deal like uh, damage to all patrons so that all patrons have like two health and then double whirlwind. These are the two options. But it usually won't happen. Okay. Yeah. Pavel also realizes and gives up. Okay. Yeah, Max Sexy. Oh, I, I'm also always taking a look at the chat between the games. So as I said, usually um, casters wouldn't do that. I do that simply because I think yeah, simply, simply because I like it. I like that you can participate and that you can also ask questions sometimes. So Max is actually saying, okay, life course, super expert commentary, good stuff, we need more of that. I mean, yeah, it's both, both sides, of course. I mean, of course, it's like analytic um, and kind of expert commentary. On the other hand, um, probably the, the, the part of the fun casting gets a little bit reduced because, like, obviously I'm not... A funny guy, right? So, um, being a no funny guy, um, yeah, this this aspect of the game will be a little bit lost. But yeah, you have to live with it. You have to take it, guys. Okay, so we have Serena's uh, hunter against Pavel's mage. Yeah. Okay, uh, it looks like an aggro hunter. Agro Hunter being the Hunter version, pure face, face Hunter actually, with usually explosive tra uh, traps and stuff like this, going very quickly, going very aggressive. Oh. Ah, I'm getting something like I should give you music during the breaks. I will be able to give you music during the breaks. If they I will give you some electro, guys. Okay, no, but seriously, no. We have Hunter against Mage. And uh, the end is coming for the Face Hunter. And the end is also especially coming because Face Hunter does have actually a bad matchup against Freeze Mage. Pavel actually decided for the Freeze Mage or for Freeze Mage here. He didn't bring that to... 
the European qualifiers did you? If I remember right. Hmm? Whatever it is. So Freeze Match has usually a good lineup against Face Hunter. The reason the reason for that is because Face Hunter can actually not outvalue Freeze Match. And this is really, really rare because Freeze Match actually runs a lot of stuff which doesn't have a value impact, being stuff like uh, Frost Nova or even stuff like Blizzard. I mean, yes, it also leads to damage, but it doesn't have like a value impact. Um, not not a good value impact, some, but really tiny. But Face Hunter, because Face Hunter has even much less value, um, can simply be outvalued by Freeze Mage. Um, it can simply get outvalued by Freeze Mage. And then, if Freeze Mage actually can outvalue a deck, suddenly they can actually use all the resources to actually deal damage on minions or respectively also to heal with Alex Trusts are themselves. And then it gets really good and really also awkward for the hunter. So something like, um, and also if you think in, um, in aspects or in regards to heal. So for example, you could always say, yeah, heal bots are pretty nasty for face hunter. Yeah, for obvious reasons, right? I mean, they recover eight life where Face Hunter is actually exactly targeting the life as a resource. So, actually, Healbot being of insane strength against Face Hunter. And now, simply imagine somebody would run four Healbots against you. Yes, and this is exactly what Freeze Mage is. Two Healbots because two times armor up, two times eight armor up, but they also run two Mad Scientists, which can actually retrieve this plus eight armor. It's not like eight, four Healbots, but it's like three Healbots. And then you have also Alex Trusser, which will always bring you up from 1 to 15 again, again because of the ice block. So that means Freeze Mage actually runs 4 or 5 heal bots against Face Hunter, which is of pretty insane importance, and also has the draw engine to actually arrive them. We haven't seen a block being played yet, though, right? I didn't pay exactly attention. We even see Pyroblast being played in the deck. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he could now, for example, or if he would see something like um, even a fireball on Misha. On the other hand, there is the flame strike next turn. But yeah, Pavel goes for the fireball on Misha, so he actually decides to use his resources defensively. It doesn't mean that he cannot swap plans, but oh, there is a high main, which is actually... Not extreme standard in a pure face hunter. Well, some play one, some play zero, some play two. But high main is the card which is needed against freeze mage, of course. Simply to assure the board control, simply to force freeze mage into the state where they actually have to do something. The only way for hunter usually to win is bring freeze mage down very quickly. So, for example, they not having any ice barriers. Yeah, and this is exactly what you saw here. Pavel not having any ice barriers. Oh, oh, do we really see the Lothab coming down? Usually you should play Lothab to actually block down a potential freeze. So usually the the order would be Savannah High Main uh, into Lothab Glazuka here. Because, oh, oh that, that is actually really surprising, isn't it? I mean... I mean, I can see a reasoning to do that. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there is definitely a reasoning to do that, but it's, I mean, okay, okay, now I see, yeah, uh, it's, um, I didn't see that Pavel doesn't even have Ice Block online. So if Pavel doesn't have Ice Block online, this actually makes a lot of sense because this actually sets up for a potential lethal. Mm, yeah, we, we, we will see about that, but it actually simply sets up for a potential lethal here. Having 6 plus 5 from the kill command and um, shot into face for 13. And yeah, Pavel needs to do that in order to prevent lethal. So very, very spot on for both players. Really strong play from both sides. Yeah, really strong plays from both sides for sure. Like, um, yeah, Pavel seeing that the only uh, way to prevent that is... I mean, he didn't have too many options, but he... Could have hoped for no removal playing Antonidas, but then he would have simply died. 
and this was exactly what didn't happen here so that was pretty spot on there was the high main and leopard gnome coming down If Suvenna would have played um, Glaive Suka, he could have dealt, if he would have been lucky and hit the spider, he could have actually dealt um, 4, 6, well actually, did. anyways, he could have dealt 10 damage, bringing Pavel down to 2, simply hoping that he doesn't have Alex Trusser, because if he wouldn't have had Alex Trusser, yeah, then he could have, okay, yeah, that's enough, it would have been enough, yeah. That was actually ultra interesting, because... It would have not been enough if. Oh, would have been enough anyways. I didn't check. They were playing pretty quickly, but I think it needed to hit one of the spiders, right? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the face hunter being of incredibly importance that it could actually squeeze this win. In terms of percentage, you could probably say it's like a 30% matchup, like a 30 70. And Surrender just got that, so that's like. Like getting a break in the in tennis, or oh, they they just play it through. I see. Okay. So, Surrender could clear Santer against Mage, and that was well, it was insane to be honest. Because if he, um, I mean, we know that um, Pavel is actually running a very very similar matchup or a similar lineup to what actually. Um, Taish actually run at BlizzCon at the Worlds and this lineup, this Priest Mage Warrior lineup actually targets specifically aggressive decks. So Surrender actually having an aggressive deck in his lineup being the Face Hunter, probably being the most aggressive deck of his decks it, um, it means that Priest should usually have like a very good matchup against Hunter or quite, quite a decent one, a 60% matchup usually, Mage again 70% and a Patron Warrior against Face Hunter probably having 80%. So this steal was incredibly important yeah, on this, this breakpoint. Making it 2-0 for Surrender and leaving only his Paladin against Priest, Mage and respectively Warrior. We see again a very aggressive one um, Paladin here, a really aggressive Secret Paladin. And the reason for that, I mean, the reason for that that we can already see that it is a very aggressive secret paladin is simply the divine favor, and this indicates a lot of small drops, a lot of aggression, even stuff like consecration. Perhaps we will only see it once. Yeah, and free smash again should be favored depending also on the build. We saw a pyroblast already from Pavel, but yeah, it goes into that. I mean, maybe he even does have it in his hand. Is it was it like a Highlander build with Reno Jackson or not? Did we already see doubles? Well, oh yeah, we see a double in the hand already, Flame Strike. So this is not the Reno Jackson freeze match, but indeed like a standard and normal one from earlier times. It is also to be mentioned that usually like a freeze match has like sixty percent against the secret paladin, but. Um, if the Secret Paladin is actually running Divine Favor, it gets equal or even in favor for the Secret Paladin. Yeah, just because he can simply refill his entire hand. It is a little bit surprising that we see Surrender here actually playing a little bit mid-range with Dr. Boom and Tyrion, but still running Divine Favors. Yeah. Because they are usually not very synergetic, also stuff like Consecration. Usually already being a little bit too expensive for getting a lot of value out of your Divine Favors. So what I'm saying is, if Surrender actually loses this game, there could be definitely a possibility that the Secret Party is not equipped against Priest against Warrior. So it's not over yet. If Pavel can actually make this game happening for his favor. Okay. Surrender attacking face here. 
not attacking the blood mage. Which is kind of interesting, right? I mean, it seems that Surrender wants that Pubble attacks. Or even saying, okay, like, Pubble doesn't get, yeah, interesting, that it is, uh, that it was uh, what it is. Actually, Surrender wants that Pubble attacks him, nearly. And he says, okay, I'm denying you the card draw unless you attack my minion. Now we have Thorson. Hmm. It's also a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm not really unused to. Uh, I'm not really used to see all the cards on the. Oh, okay. You can just Blizzard really made that well with the with the observer mode. You can just scroll over the cards and stuff like this. Also with like seeing both cards, that was never possible beforehand. But nowadays, if you're an observer and both people actually invited you, you can just see both cards, like both hands, which is pretty insane. Okay, we see Surrender here. I mean, we know that he drew eight cards or, or seven cards or whatever, like a lot of cards from the Divine Favor. But you see that the match is so, so insane that even with Secret Paladin, sometimes drawing six, seven cards, it can still not be enough, especially if a Thorison came down, of course. I mean, the Thorison is simply like the nuts for, um, for Freeze Match, of course. Getting a discount on the entire hand, that is simply very, very huge, especially because there is, or there are these combo possibilities, Blizzard and to Doomsayer, and if if the secret paladin cannot handle the doomsayer, it usually will get really, really, really difficult to get out of that. Because uh, um, freeze doomsayer does not only mean that you lose one turn, but it actually means you lose like three turns. You lose first of all the turn where you are freezed, then you also lose the next turn because you don't have anything on the board, and you probably will lose respective another turn. So if a doomsayer, a freeze doomsayer actually takes effect. That's tremendous. I just say it again. Like first of all, you lose the freeze. Second of all, these minions get rust. So that's another turn, and then of course the turn where you cannot play anything. So three turns, and this is exactly what happens here. You see, surrender actually even decided to get the five-three weapon. It's reasonable. Yeah, defender has to uh, surrender has to actually decide between whether he wants to have a five-three weapon, no Tyrion, or a four-two weapon. But there is also another side um, and another aspect to be mentioned here. It's not only about the 5-3 weapon, but it's also about the heal. The True Silver's Champion actually delivers you heal. It simply heals you for 4 after Alex trusts her came down. Yeah, so there is a certain amount of... Um, there's a certain percentage that you actually like to keep it and preserve it for the time where you actually are completely ahead but you only need these two heal or you only need these four heal to assure that freeze match cannot kill you next turn and I, I i think i i like how he played it and there is really not nothing to be done after after freeze mage after freeze mage got thorson down Got a whole discount on the entire hand, even getting stuff like Alex Trust. Uh, it's huge. Yeah. The only thing which is actually missing, uh, missing, is kind of burn. But, but actually, it's really funny, right? There is not, not one burn. <laughs> okay, surrender saves the time. Yeah, but, but it's funny, right? There were not, not even burn enough to deal six damage. Nine cards and no burn possibility. Okay, so that actually clears the freeze mage. So we still have priest and warrior. Warrior being really, really strong against paladin, and that's also the reason why Pablo actually is taking it. He says, "Okay, I'm first getting this win, and then we see how it goes with the priest." The reason why this matchup should be hugely favored for uh, hugely favored, but should be favored for patron is simply because, like, first of all, of course, they have the tools to actually handle 
Oh, you see me just like... Uh, I just saw the zombie show from Surrender's um, site. And that's actually quite very interesting, right? That he runs a zombie show in such an aggressive paladin. And it has to be aggressive because he also saw Divine Favor, right? You wouldn't like to play... You wouldn't like to play Divine Favor in a non-aggressive deck. It's just interesting. It's like a mid-range version, a mid-range version of Paladin, but with Divine Favor um, to not run out of cards. But that's the thing, right? And Pavel already saw the Divine Favor. And this is really, really important because the Patent Warrior can actually decide whether he wants to play full value or sometimes even draw the one or the other more card. And if you know that your opponent actually plays Divine Favors, you just always are on the lookout that your opponent just doesn't get enough value out of the Divine Favors and then it should be quite possible to squeeze the game, to squeeze the win. In percentage it is probably like 60%. Usually you would have music probably even in Hearthstone, right? I mean, I actually shut... I actually don't have... How does it work? Yeah, usually you got this tool, right? It's... Um, here and here. Here you go. Bam, bam. I mean, usually I put this music out because I think, like, I find it kind of sometimes annoying for focus issues. Yeah, I think I let it be, guys. If you want Hustle music, just put on your own music or your own Hustle music. Um, I let it off because afterwards it's too loud and you can. Give me feedback in 14 minutes or 15 minutes. Okay guys, so what's happening here? Yeah. We see Surrender, Avenge, Repentance, but here we see the Death Bite coming down on one one. And not the F1-2 actually, which is also kind of interesting, isn't it? So Pavel actually says, I want that the Creeper has one more health. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a very, very good one. Just providing this one additional card. We see Surrender actually kind out of options. He needs to race, but... It really doesn't seem that it's good enough, especially not with Pavel now having actually the option to produce infinite patrons. I heard infinite patrons are pretty good against Paladin if he doesn't have Consecration. And Surrender, as his, as his deck looks, probably doesn't even run any qualities. I mean, putting aside that he would need both anyways. Uh, there is... Oh yeah, yeah, okay, right. He, he, did he knew that? And he played around Repentance, and he was right, actually. He could have also, and that was a really strong move, actually. Because he could have also simply said, okay, there is no Repentance. I just YOLO the Grim Patron. But um, Pavel, being quite spot on, played around that. Pretty good. I mean, it was not absolutely obvious, right? I mean, the chances of Surrender having uh, Repentance were not that huge. Because usually, like, there are also decks which actually don't run Repentance at all. And uh, the patron play actually, if if there is no repentance, simply wins the game. So that was actually a really really tough decision. Like either to gamble on the surrender not having repentance. If he has repentance, it's still not that bad, but it's definitely not good either. On the other hand, if he doesn't have repentance, simply instant winning, or actually deciding to play the frozen berserkers. 
Yeah, and getting yourself into an acceptable position, but maybe like now he has to do it, right? But now perhaps it's not. Now it's perhaps too late. So it was not that. I don't know whether I like that because, like, if you wait, I mean, I know in this case he would have had repentance and stuff, but even then it's not that bad. Um, but if you actually simply wait, what happens if the secret challenger comes down? Then you can still not do your patron because then, um, then surrender will have the repentance then, which then is even much much worse. So if you simply drop, um, yeah, if you simply yolo, perhaps it could have been better. Who knows? Because now, now it's a very ugly situation, right? I mean, now he's actually forced to do what he probably doesn't want to do. Hmm. We will see how this pans out. Beum, beum, beum. Yeah. I mean, that's simply. Why, what? It's one off. What? Well, I mean, it's one off, but. There's also theory coming down. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It somehow looked that there could have been something else. Is it already over or is there something to be done? I mean, there are two battle rages in Public Sand. I wouldn't say it's over yet, indeed. Yeah, on the other hand, I don't also know, um, like, Surrender is now probably trading the 2 1, right? It would only make sense to also trade the 2 1. Yeah, I trading the 2 1 in the. That's interesting. Oh, he doesn't trade. Oh, that gives an opening. That gives a proper that that gives a potential opening actually. Hmm? Tasmas? Well, what happens? Yeah, exactly. And this is the whirlwind. And if this would have actually attacked the three two, I don't even know whether Surrender would have not even like want to attack twice, but. Definitely the 2-1 goes into the 3-2. Because now it's actually two more card draw and two more minions. And all of that just to deal these two more damage. I don't know about that guys. I don't know about that. I think the 2-1, I mean, like Surrender had the option to actually trade the 2-1 into the 3-2. And the three true actually now like now obviously it were like two minions and also getting like two additional cards. But what usually at least will happen usually is like that the three two can do something like deal three damage somewhere. And your two one is not even worth anything because the two one can simply get traded. Um, the two one will simply get traded into one of those patrons also producing a new one. Okay, so there is of course no lethal option. Eighteen life, which is. Well, that's lethal for Pavel because Pavel has um, what is it? It's yeah. Pavel also has Grom, so that means lethal. And that makes it game five, guys. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, game five being um, and also the reverse sweep. I mean. As we said, like if, if the freeze match could actually like get the win against Paladin, especially against this kind of Paladin, it wouldn't be even that surprising if there would be like a reverse sweep coming down. Okay, so we have the priest against the zombie chow aggressive divine favor <laughs> mid range paladin. Secret mid range paladin. Uh, 
And the question is whether the priest is like actually a dragon priest or a control priest and respectively the matchups uh, would change. Dragon priest being actually quite strong against Secret Paladin. Um, but it seems to be like a control priest. Um, where you can see that of course are like um, components like Okanai and Light of the Naru and Sludge Pager. The Secret Paladin having yeah, Zombie Chow. But the, fun, uh, the, the thing is, if you play Zombie Chow and it gets attacked by this, he will be able to heal. And otherwise he could be forced to not do anything. This is like your hope. So I think Coin into Knife Juggle is actually, or could actually be stronger because Priest doesn't really have any any tools to actually remove the Knife Juggler. The only thing which would, could potentially happen is that he actually plays um, power World Shield on that. But even then, usually nothing happens because if he plays power World Shield on this, this would attack your face instead of the Juggler, of course, and then he would only have a 1-5. So the Chow actually simply enables Priest to make the attack and draw a card for 2 mana. And now you could say, yeah, for 2 mana drawing a card, well, that's, that's okay, 2 mana a card, that's fair. But it's not fair because the alternate play from Priest is doing nothing. So by playing the Chow, um, Surrender actually enabled Pavel to draw a card. Of course we can see the hand, so for us it's easier to be sad. But usually, oh, that's... Yeah, okay, and that's probably also possible. Yeah, but as, as, as I said, like, for us it's easier to, to be sad than done because we also see, of course, both sides. But usually Priest doesn't really have tools to, to clean that turn two. Yeah, it's usually not possible. On the other hand, Surrender also doesn't know whether it's Dragon Priest, so not yet. Which means perhaps Surrender was afraid that the 2 for Taunt would have come down. And if the 2 for Taunt, of, of course, would have come down, that's really, that would have been really bad for the Knife Juggler again. Yeah. So perhaps... Perhaps he tried to play around that. But if the 2 4 taunt would have come down, it would have been also really, really bad for the zombie show, right? So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. So. What's going on here? Yeah. So what's going on is Priest is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, yeah. This. Uh, yeah. This. What, what you just see is pretty good, right? That was, that was a pretty good action. Complete board clear. That's very convenient. On the other hand, Surrender can still simply attack this Reborn Pyromancer. So, it's not the end of the world. But that was a pretty good action. We have stuff like Lothab. Usually not that effective against Priest, but could help sometimes. Sometimes really good, sometimes not that good. Mysterious Challenger, obviously always good. Um, but we can also always uh, already see that Priest does have all the tools he requires. And there's a Thought Steel that will probably not do that much. But there's Organized Circle. And Organized Circle being extremely strong for board clear purposes. And it's actually exactly what Secret Paladin la uh, last resort is. Which is going all in on the board and then having nothing afterwards. And Okana into the circle is exactly countering that as long as Priest does have enough life resources. And this is exactly what Priest does have here. Enough life resources. So whenever Paladin goes all in on board, Bayum Wayum, Okana into circle of healing, everything is gone and Priest wins. So it's not unlikely to, uh, if you would see a reverse sweep from Pavel here. We of course see also other stuff which is very helpful in this matchup, especially once you stabilize. We see a holy fire which actually converts mana into uh, sustainability. We see all kind of stuff. We see a holy nova which will also help tremendously and so on and so on.
In this regard, Holinova coming down. Yeah, everything incredibly strong. Whatever it is, yeah. Look at this. 5-2 against the 6-4. Holinova healed him. Uh, healed himself and then uh, cleared the board again. I mean, speaking of feelings, it must feel really bad for Surrender because he had the victory nearly at his hands. So close, guys. So close. So many times. So close. And now this. Here, is, as we talked about at Lothab, not even doing anything, actually. Pavel could simply completely utilize his whole mana effectively. That was also <laughs> not really like the nicest thing. And now, exactly like what we talked about, Surrender simply going all in on board, just hoping that Pavel doesn't have this organized circle, especially because he played already one last turn. But yeah, the hope getting completely crushed. Heal on the mini bot and circle of healing for board clear. Now, that's rough. That's rough. And Surrender, as well. there is a second challenger, but he doesn't do anything, yeah, unfortunately, because once the secrets are out of the deck, they are out of the deck. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, good. I guess we will also see a Surrender from Surrender soon, simply because, simply because he surrendered all the other games also quite quickly. When he lost, he surrendered always quite quickly. Not saying... It's the wrong thing, but I'm just saying, like, there are some people who actually play it always till the very end and surrender. If he sees the game's over, he just surrenders. So, I'm really wondering. Yeah, I have no time yeah never mind. I, I, I was wondering what, what's with the name, but I guess it's... Like, his name is Surrender because he probably implies that if you play against him, you should surrender. I guess that's the initial plan, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, reverse sweep by Pavel. Yeah, very, very likely and very likely being 99.9% .9 in this regard. Yeah, so Pavel made it. Yeah, instead of giving up when he was completely, extremely and utterly behind, he he came back. He came back. He didn't give up. He didn't lost his spirit to fight. And this is what happens if you if you are behind but you don't give up. So never ever give up, guys. That's that's the lesson we can actually take from this game and from this match respectively here. So very important life lessons also be learned here actively. Good. 3-2. Bayon. Yeah. I take a short look at the chat. 